one of the things that I really enjoy doing, both in digital and analog media, especially if I'm using pen, um, is to use both line work and ink work and mix that in with, uh, with watercolor. So what I'm going to do is go into an underlayer and start to add a sense of lighting using a watercolor tool. And um, we'll just uh, test this out. We'll make the uh, the tool size a lot smaller, um, and just kind of see what what we can get with it. A harsh black is probably too much, so we can up the amount of thinners, because um, we want to to start softly and then push the value down as we go. That's kind of creating some better effects. Okay, so clear that layer, and then we'll talk about how to do this. So the first thing that you want to do when you go into um, creating a sense of light is when you look at your reference photo, um, figure out where the light source is coming from, and then you can choose to stick with that or not. Because we're working with forms and we know how to draw forms, we can make the light go around the forms however we want. Um, in this case, we've begun with uh, light that kind of really highlights the corner of the face. So we're going to stick with that, and we're going to start adding um, some effects to that. So one concept to use is called the poster. And basically, in the poster, what you do is anywhere that there's shadow, you go ahead and put down shadow effects. And we're not going to worry about line direction with this tool um, because we're going to come back and blend it just like you would with watercolor. Um, because fortunately Art Rage has a, a tool they call the knife tool. And what I like about doing this digitally is that um, we can go into an underlayer rather than putting it on top and that allows us to preserve all the line work that we did. We don't want to just abandon all that work uh, for the sake of some lighting. So I'm taking some care to kind of preserve some of the areas of light and shadow and work in kind of all over the place here. Get into the hair a little bit, get some shadow in the ear. And then we should definitely work into the background some. And when you're working on an edge, especially in painting, but drawing as well, if you draw over the edge, I think that's the best kind of situation because that um, can give you the ability to control how sharp or how not sharp that edge is. Let's turn up the size of the tool. I think for some background we'll actually go much bigger than that. Um, we'll go up to like 300 just to kind of cover some ground really quickly. The main work of this is going to be through the uh, blending tool anyway. So we'll give them we're going to give him a heavier background shadow. Probably erase some of that. Echo the shape of the head a little bit. Now here's where it gets fun. If we switch over to the knife tool, um, we can uh, 
pick a preset and kind of vary that. So the knife tool allows us to kind of blend a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. And the blending allows us to control the transitions between everything a little bit better, make it softer, a little more realistic, more watercolor-like. And again, when you blend, and this goes for watercolor, ink, and everything as well, um, you're going to lose some uh, depth of the value. So you're going to wind up working in layers anyway. Um, So you're going to come back and darken stuff. But at this stage, it's fine because what we're doing is creating a poster. We're just dividing light and dark without really thinking too much further into it than that. We're not thinking like, let's get the correct level of darkness yet. We'll come back to that though. And we need to come back into probably our cross hatch layer and do a little bit of erasure. Get these little extra lines out. They're just kind of becoming a distraction. There we go. So now we very quickly developed a section of this um, of this piece. Uh, pretty easily, I think. Um, we can actually go into some of the other layers and blend later, but um, we don't have to do that just yet. There's still other stuff we can do. So if we turn that off, um, if we turn everything off, except for the shadow, you can kind of see that the, that the figure itself um, kind of comes through even in this stage. Um, but when we turn on each progressive layer, things kind of get a little more interesting. Um, one of the potential methods that you could do is just use basic line work and basic um, uh, value work like this, and you could call it done, uh, potentially, but we're going to go for a higher degree of, of polish. So the next thing that we want to do is um, uh, increase the loading uh, and decrease the thinners a little bit, maybe increase a little bit of pressure. And then we're going to do another layer um, and um, see what we can come up with as far as adding more, adding more to it. So here we're going to go down a couple of steps in value. We're going to make things just a bit darker that way because we're still just using uh, straight black. Um, and we're going to need a fairly precise tool because we're going to start to get into some smaller details here. Um, so I'm going to take the tool size down really far, which that's the thing about analog that is better than digital in some ways. If you need to reduce the size of your tool, you just quickly grab another brush um, or um, use the tip of your brush, change from the side of your pencil to the point. So that's one of the things that's like slower and more painstaking in digital work and a disadvantage to working digitally. Um, one of the things that I'm going to do here is I'm going to start working into some places that I know are going to be dark and working into what's called the uh, the shadow core. Along every um, shaded object there's going to be a transition point from the light side to the dark side. And usually within an object, not the cast shadow, but the shadow on the object itself, there's going to be um, some quite dark uh, value right along that transition. That's probably going to be the darkest spot along that transition as well. So here we're going to work kind of carefully around the entire uh, portrait to create that sense of there being a shadow core 
in the transitional areas. And any place we know that there's going to be deep shadow, we're going to go ahead and push that down too. So then when we come back in with the, with the knife tool and we start to blend it out a little bit, we're going to reduce the size of the tool. Um, we're going to kind of work gently into the transitions and kind of make that blend with the layer below. So it's going to be a little more, um, a little more subtle. We don't want any kind of like harsh transitions yet. Um, when we work into a later stage, what we're going to do is put in our absolute blacks and uh, really get dramatic with it because at a certain point you have to stop being gradual with it and you have to commit to the uh, to the values that you need. So when we blend along this edge here, you know, if you're too careful with it, it can kind of lose some activity and some life, especially in the digital realm, because things can get too precise. Um, if you're working in, in, in an analog material, like pen and ink, uh, you do want to stay loose as well. It's one of the most important things you can do for your for your um, drawings. Certain productive looseness is kind of the thing that most artists aspire to. Because part of it is that if you're loose, you can go quickly. So now this is kind of developed into uh, a portrait with a sense of lighting, and uh, and that sense of lighting is you know already pretty dramatic at this point. But we can push it further because we haven't introduced like a full black into it. For instance, um, if we switch back over to the watercolor tool, if we load up and uh, and use our absolute black. You know, we're pretty far from that absolute black, um, and so we need to. But we need to get there, and we're gonna get there in the next couple of layers. And again, I'm still working with the with the watercolor tool. So one of the things that, um, if we go back to the reference photo, one of the things that that is kind of weak about the reference photo. And let me turn some layers off here is the reference photo doesn't have any super dramatic dark shadows, but it kind of needs it. Um, I would like there to be some more of that. So we're going to add it in um, and kind of make that up based on what we know about the forms and the structure. So I think uh, one of the potentially interesting things we could do is we could take this cast shadow and make it really dark. Um, so we'll do just like a 10% thinner um, and see what that looks like. That's pretty dark, but it leaves us some room to work with. Uh, we don't want to use 100% dark in the background, but we want to come close. Maybe we'll do like not like 90% loading. Now we'll do full loading just to get some color down there and 15% thinner. Yeah, there we go. So now we've kind of created what's going to be like the 9 out of 10 on the value um, the value scale. And uh, again, I'm going to make the tool size large. And we're going to work into this background and make the shadow super dramatic. And again, we're going to use the knife tool and blend it in. Um, with the existing shadow because we always want to keep integrating everything. Now the other thing that I'm going to do is um, darken the background a little bit um, around it as well. 
So we're going to increase to about 50% thinners, and we're going to fill in the rest of the background. And so what this is going to do is create a very dramatic uh, context for this portrait to exist in. And we're going to cover up the entire thing. One of the one of the things that you want to think about whenever you do any kind of art piece is just 90% of this of artwork is just literally filling up a page. The second that you fill up the filling that you fill up a page or your format, things get really interesting because now what's white looks like light, and we can use the blender, increase the tool size. We can erase and remove stuff up to that edge. Blend back. I want to preserve the light on the on the head. So we're gonna go along the edge and remove some. But the blender is going to bring it back a little bit. So here we're going to blend in because we use the same layer for two different values of everything. So. Now we're kind of creating some rich transitions here. Um, one of the things that I notice is that this is a little flat, so one of the things we can do is um, do just water with this. We can make the tool size large again. We can kind of give the uh, give the paper some texture by basically just thinning out this background there so that our blending will actually kind of work. Then when we go back in with our blending tool, it's going to work a little bit better, I think. Make the blending tool like 250. There we go. So now this is kind of, it's a more interesting background to look at because it has some actual textures going on. Um, without that, it was getting a little dry, I think, a little boring. So now that we have some, some texture in the background, I think it's a little more interesting because it gives you a little more sense of, of light um, than, previ than it previously did. So the uh, final thing that we kind of need to do um, to really to really finish up some stuff is um, is to maybe clean up some under layers a little bit um, and and then commit to the actual finished product.